Well, one of the reasons I love my protege is that it has really incorporated into the design a very intentional division of labor. So it's in four different sections that I refer to as quadrants. And not only do I think about planting in them in separate zones, but also working in them in, se in separate zones. And yesterday I worked in what I think of as quadrant two over here. I did a video about it. And you can see how beautifully pruned this one section is. So I pruned all of this. I planted the tomatoes in the center and now I'm getting ready to work on another quadrant. So typically I do one a day so it doesn't hurt my back. One of the advantages, uh, this is one of those frequently asked questions, how long has this been here? It's been here maybe 26 years. Uh, it's been here a long time. I planted all of this myself and they started out as one gallon plants. This is another FAQ. One gallon plants planted approximately every 15 to 18 inches. It adopted its size and the shape it is now, I would say easily within two years, but you could tell immediately the design it was going um, to arrive at almost immediately. It's wintergreen boxwood. Wintergreen is very tough. It grows very quickly, which is one of the reasons I have to prune it pretty frequently. If I did it again, I would probably use a different variety that doesn't grow quite so quickly. Um, but one of the advantages of it growing is that now that it's matured, the height of it is such that I don't have to bend over as much anymore to prune it. So you can see here at the end, I created boxwood balls and this one has just been beautifully, beautifully clipped. And now I'm getting ready to start on this one. And so many of you have asked me how I do it that I thought I would show you. Now, the same principles apply whether it's an established sphere, sphere, an established globe, or this is a brand new boxwood that has something of a round shape, and I'm trying to really get it in a very, very architectural, tailored form. The same principles apply. So let me show you what I did. First of all, I have my favorite Barnell pruners. I'll put a link at the bottom. Um, but I start at the top, roughly in the center. And you'll notice that here I have a tarp. This is actually from the dollar store. It's a dollar um, shower curtain, shower liner. It's very lightweight. I can easily pick it up. Um, the other way that I've started using this, you guys, is if I'm doing a lot of yard work in the front or the back, I just put it in the middle of the lawn and I just throw in any debris, any clippings, um, basically any mess that I'm making on top of this tarp and then I'll, all I have to do is pick up the tarp. Um, and it's got a good square footage, lots of surface area, so it can hold pretty much. So. That's why I've got the tarp down, is to capture the clippings. Now, you may wonder about the inside. When things are growing on the inside, um, I really don't worry about it so much. I just get in there with my gloves and kind of hand pick out any of the tiny little leaves. So, basically, I'm starting from about the middle, and I'm just going around the top. And you can see that I'm holding it at a slight angle. And don't worry too much if it's not absolutely perfect, you guys. You get better with it over time. I don't use any guide, I just eyeball it. And you'd be amazed at really how exacting you can be just by standing back and looking at what work you've done. So you can see that all I'm doing is just moving down the curve of the spherical form and all I'm doing is torquing my pruners accordingly. I'm barely even having to bend over anymore. Now these, when I first started, obviously were not so close together. I can barely navigate in between the two anymore, but that's you know, it's just a price that I'm willing to pay for their beauty. I am going to be making some changes and adaptations to this form later on in the fall when it's not so hot 
and the plants won't be so traumatized and I'll tell you about that in an upcoming video. So you can see how nicely and how easily these clippings fall just right onto the tarp. If I see any kind of a sign, and that's another reason to do this yourself and hand prune it. I do not like electrical pruners. I've talked about that before. I am the only person in these 26 years who has ever pruned this. Obviously, I'm kind of a control freak. I love these pruners because of how pointy they are and how just very meticulous I can be. Now, you may read about as you prune boxwood like this, well, over time, does it just kind of create a shell and the interior branches are devoid of foliage. In other words, there is just kind of a veneer of green around the outer edges. And yes, to a certain extent, that is true. I don't go down into the plant itself like some do to get uh, light and air down in there so that it is full in the interior as well. Now, why don't I do that? Well, partly, and primarily because Mother Nature, I have found, does it for me. So a hard rain, um, wind, different kinds of weather events will do things that will make the solidity of the surface less than perfect. So you can see here, Stuart, if you can point out how there's some gaps in here. This is from our most recent hard rain. And Mother Nature has enabled that to open up and there then is some interior branching. See, how, see down in there how there's some foliage? So I don't do it because Mother Nature does it for me. Um, and over time, because Oklahoma has such extreme weather, there could be other weather events that also contribute to that. Years ago, it was a very sad tale. I believe, Stuart, it was that terrible drought we had. Was that in 2010? I think it was 2010, um, and boy, did all of this boxwood suffer. I really thought I was gonna lose the entire uh, hedge and the potager. And I will show you a picture of that, lest you think that conditions here are always perfect. Um, it was just completely demoralizing, and a lot of large sections died. I just cut them out, and basically, when the rains returned, this boxwood was able to heal itself and now is very full and lush and sometimes grows more quickly than I would like. So now I'm just going to do the other side. And all I'm doing is gently changing the angle. The form is already in place and I am basically just I say the word basically too much, but essentially I am just cutting off what is erupting from the surface and breaking the form. Now I'm gonna stand back to see if there are any outliers that are getting in the way. I can come down here. Because it doesn't get quite as much light at the bottom, you won't have so much clipping to do at the bottom. This does require more bending over, but not much. I'm finish up this side. And this, Stuart, how long has this taken us so far? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Okay. Ten minutes to a perfectly beautiful spherical boxwood. If you're wanting to see me do one that is not already in this form, I think if you go back in my YouTube videos, I believe there's one that I did last year. If not, as soon as the opportunity presents itself, I will do another one. So I started to say earlier, this gives me an opportunity to look for problems, to look for spider mite has been really bad on boxwood this year, you guys. Um, 
Fortunately, knock on wood, we, I haven't had any problems with boxwood blight, um, but I'm gonna show you in an upcoming video what products I use to deal with pests, to help prevent uh, the emergence of boxwood blight, and what I use to fertilize them. And I'll have all of those there with links to where you can get the, you can get the products. But for right now, I think it looks pretty good. I'm always tweaking a little bit. Contrary to what some of my friends say, I do not use manicure scissors. I, I only use my pruners. But I just, it's high maintenance, I'm not gonna lie but it gives me great satisfaction. And when I talk about the design and the changes I'm gonna be making later, I will tell you how this same effect and illusion could be created, this same design using far less boxwood and have it be far less labor intensive. So stay tuned if, please let me know if you like these kind of videos, if there's any other type of material you want to cover, you guys are good about letting me know. Um, if you've got questions, I'll try to address them in an FAQ video. So there you go, how to prune a boxwood ball.